You huddle in the ruins of the old town, glad to be out of the bitter cold rain and wind. You want to start a fire for warmth, but you dare not. The moon is hidden in the clouds and the dead walk these lands. A deathly, tortured moan can be heard on the wind. It is close. You look at your companions and they look back in silence. No one dares make a noise. You take a breath and grit your teeth as you rise up just enough to peek out the window. You quickly duck back down. Blast! They're coming. They can smell your blood. Your hand moves to your sword. Your companions know. Just then, a sliver of light comes through the window, and you look to see a crescent moon peeking through the clouds. A good sign. Now is the time to move. Together you stand and wait out to meet the dead in battle. This is Nightfell. Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Joe and this is the GM Toolbox, your go-to place to get all the tools you need to enhance your TTRPG games. Before we get started today, if you like the content I'm bringing you, please take a second to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and all the things that helps me out to grow my channel and bring you more great content. Today, let's talk about dark horror, grim fantasy, those kind of settings for our D&D games. They just invoke something in us. Things like Ravenloft, Curse of Strahd, those types of games are so much fun to play. People just like to kind of feel that twinge of horror. But even those might not go far enough. Of course, there's things like Grim Hollow, which definitely take us to another level of horror. But about a year ago, I was at Gen Con, Gen Con 2023, and I'm walking the halls and I hear a woman's voice call out to me, do you play D&D? And it was an Italian accent at that. And I said, yeah, I do. And she goes, do you like grim horror? I'm like, go on. Well, I get pitched a book, a book series, you know, of, of D&D books called Nightfell. And man, was I sold on these. I'm fortunate enough to not only be a DM, but actually play in a D&D game. And the gentleman who, who DMs for me is huge into horror, especially these grim horror type settings. And he tasked me with finding him a monster book, a good horror monster book. And man, did this just hit it right on the head. You know, this was just absolutely what I was looking for. And I sure enough, I bought him the book. But not only that, I went back and bought not just the monster book, but the core rule book for this setting, among other things, which I will be showing you all today. And that is uh, The World of Nightfell. This right here. Ah, it's got to be one of my favorite finds I've ever had at Gen Con. Like, I, I love my Gen Con loot. You know, this year, 2024, I got some cool stuff. But uh, looking back, this is still my favorite pickup ever from Gen Con. Nightfell is by an Italian publisher called uh, Mana Project Studios. Man, do they make some cool stuff. And if you guys, you know, have followed my channel for any length of time, you know that I am a big fan of art that tells a story. It's one of the things that really draws me in. It's what brought me into D&D in the first place back in the 90s when I started playing in AD&D 2nd Edition. I just loved the art in all the books. I'd open it up and I'd see this art and it would just, I get lost in the art and what the story was in that art. And I feel like nowadays there's not as much of that style of art that just speaks to me, that tells me a story, a story that I, I want to know more about or I want to tell to my players. And that's what I picked up Nightfell. And the first thing I will say about Nightfell, before we get into any of the coolness of the actual writing, is the art in this book is phenomenal. This is just the inside of the cover. I mean, look at this. There's so much going on here. The art is absolutely gorgeous in Nightfell. I mean, we're, we're not, we're just at the index. <laughs> like we're at the table of contents essentially. And this is the kind of art we're getting. As we flip through page after page of just amazing art. I just, I, every, every time I, I just flip to a random page and I'm blown away by the art I see in this book. Uh, it, it just, it invokes something in me. It tells, it, 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 the art just tells stories. And, you know, right down to character art, um, just amazing, amazing stuff out of Nightfell. Uh, that's the core rule book. I also got the monster book and I got the GM screen. Let me just show you this GM screen because, oh my gosh, here it is. Three panel GM screen. Look at this. Look at this art. 
How cool is this? Okay, now the inside of it as well, very setting specific tables, very useful stuff that we will go over um, as we talk more about what Nightfell is. And then of course, the monster book. Now, if you don't plan on playing in the setting, you're probably missing out, but this monster book is worth picking up. Even if you're just, if you're just looking for some cool grim horror type monsters, uh, it is a, an amazing book filled with great stuff. So highly, highly recommend uh, at the very least, ooh, gotta show you that one. Gotta show you this one. Look at this. Look at this. Highly recommend this, uh, you know, this monster book for any D and D game. So what is Nightfell? Well, let me give you a bit of an overview of what it is before we get into all the other goodies. It's the world of Europe, and it is a world that is in its fourth age called the Lunar Age, and the sun is dead. The sun was a, a god, a being that was killed at the end of the third age. And the fourth age brought about this time of darkness called the lunar age where the dead roam the world and even the living are easily corrupted. And it is just a setting where you're never safe. You know, there's no, let's go back to town and, and rest. And everywhere is dangerous. It's this constant threat, you know, that you're living in. And not only of, of death from the undead, but of losing yourself. They did such a cool job with this with this book, with this setting, uh, with the lore. The lore is deep. It is deep. I mean, they, they do. It's not a huge book, but they really do a great job explaining, explaining the lore, explaining the world to you, uh, explaining, you know, what's happened to lead up to where we are now, which I believe is like 153 years since the Lunar Age started, something like that. So just this cool, deep, dark setting. And we get not just new lore, but we get new player options. We get new races that they refer to as ethnicities in here. We get new player classes, well, class subclasses, right? Archetypes for all, you know, for every uh, class minus the artificer from Core D&D. And we get some new classes. We get the Lunar Cultist, the Master of Tradition, the Medium, and the Vampire. So some really cool new playable stuff. They actually have a new book that just came out, I want to say earlier this year, the, within the past year, that also has a werewolf class. Uh, so some really, really neat stuff that they're, they're doing with this. Then we also get some new backgrounds as well. So if I was to actually play a game in this setting, I would definitely encourage my players to use uh, either you know, the new classes or at least the new archetypes for the classes that are in this book to really immerse in this setting because it is such a a unique and just dark grim setting. And the big thing about this being Nightfell and being that there's no sun is the moon. The moon plays a major part in Nightfell. The phases of the moon matter. Uh, they will affect different parts of your character's abilities and things like that. Uh, there's different things we can do, like we can do exorcisms or we can, you know, do, there's other stuff that we would do with the moon without giving too many spoilers in case we have players watching, but we even have uh, dice. I, uh, I got these specific dice just for this setting. They're D8. So you would roll, you can, at certain times you'll roll a D8. And if you roll uh, based on, so these D8s, they have different phases of the moon on them. So when you roll them, if the D8 matches the current uh, phase of the moon or the phase of the moon your character was born in, it will affect different outcomes for you. So it's kind of a really neat mechanic. You don't need these dice. You can just use regular D8. There's a table that translates to them. But uh, when I bought all these, I bought the two books, the DM screen. I actually bought tarot cards, which are fantastically cool. And then a friend of mine, uh, she was nice enough to buy me the dice as a present. But the tarot cards are super, super cool with neat art and everything. So they play, you know, they can play a part in the game as well. They actually make an art book. If you're just blown away like me with the art, they do have an art book, which I have not gotten yet, but I do kind of want. Uh, so the moon does play a, a significant role in this setting as the uh, GM or what they refer to in here as the night master. Uh, it is your job to track that moon phase. You're gonna create a lunar calendar and you're going to have to know what phase the moon is in. So there's, you know, basically eight different um, uh, parts. You know, there's obviously like new moon, full moon, 
and then you have you know like you're kind of waning and waxings uh but they're the waning and waxings will have different parts to them as well so you basically end up with eight different formations of the moon and based on that different stuff can happen there's also what's called uh soul points which is kind of a resource that your character has that they can lose the amount they have is based off of things uh, like their wisdom modifier, their level, and spell slots if you're a caster class. And doing different things will cause you to lose them. You can even purposely lose them in order to, let's say, regain some hit points or something like that. Uh, but if you run out of soul points, it gets bad. So you never want to run out of them. Otherwise, you could lose yourself. Really cool, unique mechanics to this world. But it's a very grim, dark world with some, some pretty dark themes, which... Uh, brings me to the point of if this is something that you want to run, I would highly, highly recommend you talk to your party first about it because uh, there's a lot of room in here for some, uh, uh, you know, red cards or black cards, however you, you know, whichever you use. But they do have a section in here about safety first, uh, you know, making sure that everybody feels, you know, safe playing it, that we don't touch on themes that might be disturbing to anybody. So this is a big thing uh, with this because the themes do get pretty, pretty heavy, pretty dark. Uh, and just have that discussion with your players. If there's any things that, you know, they're just a no for them, cut them out of the story. I would definitely not probably, I probably wouldn't run this at like a convention or something like that with strangers. I wouldn't go to my local game shop and just grab a bunch of random people and, and run the setting. Uh, this is definitely great for a game with your friends, assuming everybody's on board and okay with these themes. Or like I said, if there's a couple that they're not okay with, we can cut those out and keep going. But it is definitely, uh, it's horror. It is a horror setting. Uh, and I'm not talking like, you know, uh, even Ravenloft horror. I'm talking dark, creepy horror. So keep that in mind uh, before you play this. But super, super cool, super fun. Uh, I, I have yet to get a chance to actually run this for a group, but man, do I want to. I've been, I've been just flipping through these books for the past year, just dying to play them. And like I said, I have, now I have got to, uh, to uh, do some stuff with uh, the monster book because the guy I bought it for has thrown some of the monsters at us. But, you know, this did win an award at Gen Con for best monster, uh, you know, best monster book, essentially. Uh, so they did get their little award for this. And it is it's really, really good. Uh, so definitely check this out if if you're into horror, if you want that dark, creepy, just horrific type of setting. I mean, something that if your players all want to be scared. Now, a couple cool things they do in here is they do talk about how to maybe set the mood for this. They talk about try to play it in a big open room if you can, a bigger space with no lights on except for on the table so the darkness surrounds you, you know, it's all around you. They do have a good, great soundtrack. They actually make a soundtrack for Nightfell that you can get from Manor Project Studios' website and download it and, and play it. Uh, so definitely take a look at that as well. But even if you don't use that, get some good creepy music get some good sound effects you know the the wailing of 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 you know of ghosts or the howls of werewolves the the wind through the trees i mean get some good creepy sound going try to get some good lighting when you play this because it is <laughs> it will really help to just set the mood and really draw your players in. They also do have uh, a, a map pack. Uh, I should show you guys some of the maps because in this book, before we go too far, let me just show you one more awesome piece of art <laughs> because every page has awesome art. But uh, the book itself, like I said, it, it covers lore, uh, you know, it covers like the history, it covers religion and cultures, which is very important to the setting. Uh, and then, you know, it has the class options, but it also does have like the world itself. It's got, you know, a it's got the maps of the world and all the different areas. Uh, so there is a map pack you can download. Here's kind of the world map, right? And then they do have, as we flip through the book, we'll see you know different sections where it zooms in on the map and talks about those specific areas. So you can download the digital map pack. You know, if you're playing on a VTT, they have VTT tokens for it. Um, you have the maps, all the good stuff. There are a couple of adventures. There's a great adventure book with, I can't remember how many adventures in it, but 
Uh, you can and you can run it as a full campaign, or you can just run individual adventures out of it, taking you from level one all the way up. Really, really cool stuff. And like I said, there was the new book that came out this year, which I believe has um, some new player options, including werewolves. It's got some new monsters, and I think it may be a new adventure in it. Uh, I think the book is called Children of the Moon, maybe. Uh, yeah, Children of the Moon. Um, but I don't have that one yet. I do want to get it. If I do pick it up, I will definitely do a review on that for you as well. But Nightfell from Manor Project Studios is probably the best horror setting I have seen for uh, for at least for D&D, if not for, I mean, TTRPGs or fantasy TTRPGs in general, because this is still a fantasy game. You know, you can see, you know, using the magic and it definitely still has that high fantasy feel just in that horror setting. So take a look. I'll put a link to Manor Project's uh, uh, site where you can pick these books up in the description of this video. Uh, but please let me know what you think. Have you run uh, a horror game before, or is it something you want to run? Uh, if so, let me know in the comments and let me know what you think about Nightfell as an option for that. I'm kind of curious to uh, how many people are really into this dark, dark horror type of setting. Well, that wraps us up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you did. And I hope you guys check out Nightfell. Thank you for coming on this journey with me and I'll see you guys next time.